Okay, hello everyone, hope you're doing well. And today we're just gonna continue with our stats videos and today we're gonna look at repeated measures on over. So what that basically is, is this occurs, it's kind of a con continuation of the dependent t-test where you've got paired variables. However, we're measuring here kind of more than one group. So in this example here, the beer goggles effect suggests that drinking lots of alcohol changes the attractiveness of potential ma mates a researcher wanted to examine this effect, so they took 26 men and women who undertook four conditions where they drank either 0, 2, 4 or 6 pints. And then they asked to select a mate from the club. Because we're using the same 26 men and women on these different conditions, that's why the, the test is paired. And that's why we're doing the repeated measures on over and not the between groups where the condition, where we're, not, we're measuring different variables here. And then the attractiveness of this mate was then ranked by a panel of independent judges. Uh, so again, yeah, quite a subjective question, but yeah, let's get into Jamovia and see how we do this. Okay, so we've got our data here. So we've got 0, 2, 4, and 6 points. And then we see how each uh, person rated. So uh, 1 will be here, in this case will be just a single person. And then this is how uh, attractive mate they chose as they got more drunk. So we, we expect this to decrease as you have more points. So the first things we need to check is for normality and because we can't do this in the actual test we need to go into descriptive. So if we go exploration descriptives and hope that it loads. Cool. Uh, so then just put all your variables in and yeah we don't need any of this so just uh, we just need the normality so let's tick that and hopefully it loads quickly. Okay so we've got our data here. So again we're looking at this p here. So we want this to be above 0 0.05 in order for the test to be met and the assumption to be met. So as you can see for all of those here we're all good and we can move forward. So then what we do is we're going to repeat the measures on over. Du, 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 du. Okay, so what you want to do is you basically want to name these categories what you've got here. So here I'm going to put um, 0, because um, I know it's pints already, 4, and space 6. And if you don't put all these categories here, you won't have enough uh, space to put them into here. So just make sure you've got enough. So then if we just highlight them all and pop them in there, uh, Jamie will start doing stuff. So again, we need to check our assumptions, kind of the rest of them. Uh, so the next one we need to check is severity. Okay, so we got our data here. So now we need to check the assumption of severity and we don't need to check homogeneity because this is a paired test, so uh, nothing will show up. So severity, so we've got a value here of zero, above 0 0.05. Therefore, uh, the assumption has been met, so we can easily continue and you don't have to do anything. However, if it was below 0 0.05, you would then look at these values here, the GG um, epsilon and the HF epsilon uh, here. So what would you do if this was non-significant? You look at this GG epsilon, and if this value is below 0 0.75, then you would click this greenhouse geyser here. However, if it was above, then you would untick that and use the Hoyne fade uh, correction. But in this case, because this is above 0 0.05, we're all good. Okay, so what we do now, so we've got the correction, that's all good. Uh, so yeah, we've got our data here. We've got, we need to worry about the degree. So again, we've got this P st uh, F statistic. Again, we've got this F statistic, P value and our degrees of freedom. So what would we write, write? what would we report? So we report the F statistic, again, put 3 minus 153 in this case. We don't worry about the mean squares, just this column. And then we put our p-value telling us our data is significant. But then we want to compare uh, these groups. So if we go again into post hoc and put our uh, random factor 1 in here, as is, this is basically our data. And then we select the two keys here and we'll get some uh, results here. So what would you do? If this was non-significant, then you don't really need to worry about reporting the post two keys. Just report the descriptive such as mean and standard deviation. But because our R1 was significant, we need to report some data here. So what would you do? So don't really worry about this. So this is the p-value again. So it's telling us all of this is significant apart from this one, which is one. In this case, you only need to really worry about reporting the significant. So again, you've got a t-statistic here with our degrees of freedom uh, and our significance value. So then we need, we're here comparing zero points to four points, zero to six, two points to four, and so on. Let me just show you how I would report this now, okay? So again, we've got these kind of uh, two sides of the coin. So firstly, we would write there was a significant difference in the number of pints and how attractive a mate people chose. 
shown by this F statistic here, our degrees of freedom and our p-value. And then we just simply compare all the groups together. So there's a significant difference between uh, zero points. So then again, we write our mean and standard deviation because this is a parametric test and four points. And then we write the same mean and standard deviation. And then we write our t-value here and our p. We also use this um, D to show our effect size, and that's the same as I've shown in the previous video. So your uh, mean, so in this case, mean of four points, take away mean of zero points, because that's our like placebo, and then divided by the standard deviation of the placebo, and you'll get a D value. And then you literally just carry on and talk about all the other ones. So you're comparing zero to six, mean standard deviation, T value, and you get all of this from this table here and you just report every significant value. That's basically how you do it. So yeah, that was a really quick overview. And then the next episode, we'll look at what happens when you've got a, the assumptions don't meet and the non-parametric equivalent of this test. So thank you for listening. Don't forget to check in the comments, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, leave a comment. That'd be great. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.